And it appears Ron DeSantis is inching closer to launching a presidential campaign. A Republican Party official confirmed to NBC News the Florida governor's political operation is officially moving out of the party headquarters in Tallahassee. Trucks were seen outside the building yesterday. This move is expected to cost more than $5,000. If DeSantis's office spends that much money, they must file a report within 15 days officially declaring his candidacy, so we could be upon it. Meanwhile, DeSantis is ramping up his attacks against Donald Trump. During a press conference yesterday, the Florida governor brought up the Republican Party's losing streak while Trump is in office. Well, I look at the last however many election cycles, 2018, we lost the House, we lost the Senate, 2020, Biden becomes president, or no, excuse me, we lost the Senate in 2020, Biden becomes president and has done a huge amount of damage, very unpopular in 2022, and we were supposed to have this big red wave, and other than like Florida and Iowa, I didn't see a red wave across this country. And so I think the party has uh, developed a, a culture of losing. I think that there's uh, not uh, accountability. And I think in Florida, we really showed what it takes uh, to not just win, win big, and then deliver big. Okay, he doesn't do it as well as you, but that's okay. Thank he does you. it. Thank you, dear. No, I mean, you just have the list. and I mean, actually, you're very, just please don't do it again. Okay. It's so hard. But he kind of keeps getting, just, he wavers off. But the bottom line is, it's a losing streak, and yeah. he hopes to break it. Willie, they've just lost so much. I mean, this is, it seems to me this is a good tag for DeSantis. He does need to punch it up when he starts campaigning. Talking about, hey, I, I hate losing. I don't, I don't want to be. You know, it's a culture of losing in the Republican Party. Donald Trump lost. Dude. You punch it up. But that's actually a really good message because yeah. I think most Republicans, most Republicans would, re would prefer winning to, and I won't go through the list. Thank you. To losing like they I did, go it, you know. Go ahead. 17, 18, 19, <laughs> 20, 21, 22, 23, and some massive losses. A massive loss in 23 uh, in Wisconsin. A massive loss in Kansas in 22. A massive loss in Kentucky uh, in, in 22 on, on abortion. Uh, and then, of course, a massive loss. Even Florida, I mean, even governorships across the Deep South in Kentucky and Louisiana in those off years, like, yeah, they're losing the big races, but they're losing the smaller races, too, because, again, Trumpism does not scale. In fact, it pushes people away. I, I keep having it. I know it's anecdotal, but I just keep talking to, to Republicans, yeah. keep talking to them. And, and, you know, I used to my anecdotal evidence was always, well, you know, they don't care what he does. They're going to vote for him anyway. Not that way anymore. Over the past three, four months, it's broken dramatically away from him. And again, people aren't saying it to me to make me feel good because they're the same ones who said they're voting for a guy who accused me of murder because of regulations. So, <laughs> I mean, so these people talk straight. And what they're saying now is he's going to lose. He has too much going on. He's, he's got too many cases going on. He's too crazy on social media. They just want, thank him for his service, but they want him in the rearview mirror. This is a potent message that Ron DeSantis could push. Joe, I think you're absolutely right. And especially, I would submit, after that CNN town hall last week, where even yes. Republicans, independents, we talked about, even Republicans go, ugh, not again, not again. So the question now, the open question is, What's the alternative? And maybe it is Ron DeSantis. This is happening, by the way. The moving trucks are in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. Governor DeSantis' press secretary quit yesterday, stepped down, I should say, to say, mm -hmm. moving on to pursue other opportunities to continue to drive Governor DeSantis' messages across the country. So you can read into that what you will. So Ron DeSantis is getting in the race. I guess the question, Jonathan Lemire, is, is the culture of losing argument potent enough in a Republican primary? To win, can he beat Donald Trump with that? Reminding voters, look at the record under Donald Trump. We keep losing. We want power. We want to change the country and our vision. We need power to do that. And Donald Trump has cost us that, and he'll do it again in 2024. Will that be enough? 
There are those in the Republican Party that are do want to turn the page on Donald Trump who say electability has always been Governor Sanders' best argument, and that's why they've been so dismayed that he has fought culture war after culture war, whether it's against Disney and you know, it's the abortion restrictions and so on, that they feel like that's hurting that argument. They feel like he is, when he does that, he is pitching himself to a smaller slice of the electorate because what you just heard there from the governor is a fairly clever way to attack Trump's record without attacking Trump the person. And that is what so many of these Republicans have struggled with, is how do you distance yourself from Trump without either A, drawing his wrath, or B, alienating his voters. And by doing it this way, we are not taking on Trump personally, but simply saying, look, under his leadership, we've taken all these losses, losses we shouldn't have suffered. That might be a sort of clever way to do it. And we spent time on the show yesterday talking about some of these state polls that show DeSantis fares much better than Trump in head-to-head nice. -head matchups against Biden, including in some states, Joe, that really haven't been on the map for Republicans in a long time, things like Virginia and Colorado. So there's a lot here we don't know yet about DeSantis. He'll need to be vetted on a national stage. Yes, he had a good weekend in Iowa, but the, his pseudo campaign has been off to a shaky start. But he may have stumbled onto something that has a shot of working. It is so early. It is so early. Let me once again say that in July of 2007, uh, when they were even further along in, in the presidential process than they are right than we are right now, uh, people were writing John McCain's obituaries uh, in newspapers, political obituaries, saying there's no way he could win the Republican primary. He came back and won the Republican primary. Caddy Kay, though, you know, Willie brought up the town hall meeting. Uh, it, 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 the other night, CNN. I'm, that's another thing I'm hearing from Republicans. And they're saying specifically, I'm not voting for that man. And we've been talking about women, the decision makers in the suburbs of Atlanta, the suburbs of Philly, the suburbs of Detroit, the suburbs of Milwaukee. And what did they see during the town hall meeting? They saw a man responsible, actually, for taking away of, of, of the half century of their own rights over their own bodies to make their own medical decisions. They saw him mocking and ridiculing a woman that a jury unanimously declared uh, a woman who was sexually assaulted by Donald Trump. And that night, he mocked her. And that night, he once again went back and said, Maybe it's not a bad thing that stars like me have been able to sexually assault women Se yeah, for he was millions liable of, sexual of abuse. years, for millions of years, which, of course, we'll let him talk to his favorite scientist there. But, but again, the support keeps getting smaller because he keeps going out of his way, offending the very people that he needs to bring back on his side if he wants to win.